Hey, this is a quick tutorial on how to use GarageBand and make program drums. First thing you want to do is click New Project and the Loops option. Then you're going to tell GarageBand where you want to save the file, name the file, and change the tempo and the time signature. Uh, you're probably not going to mess with the key because for drums it doesn't really matter. Usually you're going to be in 4-4 or generally 3-4 or 6-8. Uh, I did this one at 150 beats per minute just to show you how it works. So GarageBand is going to load up here and we're going to already be in the loops section over here and we're going to click on all drums. We're going to scroll down the side here until we see one of these options that is green and not blue. It's, yeah, it sounds like that. We're going to click it and move it over here onto the left and it's going to come up. And now we're going to change from the loops to this little eye down here in the right hand corner and we're going to click on drum kits and I have a bunch of other options but you're going to want to choose rock kit because it's pretty much the most straightforward one for rock drums. And then you can click on the edit tab and you can change a few things in here, but I would suggest just leaving it alone. So now we're going to go back to this little sample that we had. We're going to zoom in on it. We're also going to click these scissors in the lower left hand corner that brings up this little pane here with the piano keys on the side. And that shows you each individual drum beat for that thing. We're going to click on one. We're going to go up to edit and cut so that it's on your mouse thing. And we're going to just uh, delete the whole thing. So since this is a rock file, uh, it's going to sound like the rock drum set instead of whatever you selected. So we're going to go to about the second measure and click paste because if you do it at the first measure, sometimes uh, it doesn't pick it up when you export it. Uh, make sure the velocity is all the way up to 127 and that the length is about two bars or just one bar or however many you want it to be. But that way they're all consistent. Uh, drag it down to the bass kick because bass kicks are pretty important and we'll go to the next tab over and paste it. Just copy and paste it over and over as many times as you want. Uh, there's eight measures for a bar here obviously in 4-4 four, four time. So we'll play it. It'll sound like this. Pretty simple and straightforward drum kick. Um, if you like that, you can turn the, met the metronome on or off by clicking down on the right side. Uh, next thing you're going to do is you're going to click on the command button, also known as the apple key, and then click, and that makes a new note. So you're going to want to make this note the same length and velocity as the first notes, and you're going to want to change it to the snare option. Pick whichever snare sounds better to you. And we're going to put it on the third bass kick because it's going to sound good like that. We're going to copy it, and we're going to move back over here, and we're going to put it on the seventh bass kick because that, that's how drums work. And we're going to paste it on there. And now you have drum and snare. Sounds like this. All right, now it's time for some symbols. We're going to do the same thing. We're just going to apple or command click, move it all the way to the beginning, change the velocity, change the length. And we're going to move it to the hi hat because hi hats sound good. So there it is on the hi hat, the open, the most open hi hat. There we go. We're going to copy it and we're going to paste it at one and then at three. We're going to paste it at 5, and then again at 7. And you have hi-hat, snare, and bass kick sounds like this. Nice little two-step beat. Now we're going to select the whole thing, not the individual notes, but the whole thing at the top. We're going to copy it and paste it. You can do the uh, Command-C and Command-V, copy and paste respectively, or you can go up to the edit thing uh, and click on it if you'd rather. As you see now we have two of them, so we can select both of them, copy both of them, go to the end, make sure you stay online with the measure there, and paste it again, and listen to the whole thing. Alright, so now it's about time to do a drum roll. So say you want a snare roll to start on the third beat, you move the snare to the third beat. Uh, and you're going to want to move the get rid of the hi-hats, so instead of just deleting them and pasting the snare, you're going to just want to put the snare, the hi-hats, move the hi-hats down to the snare. Uh, you're also going to want to copy and paste it to make it four notes here. Uh, four notes of the snare. And we're going to listen to it back, and this is what it sounds like. Yeah, not really a snare roll, not as fast as we want. So what we're going to do is we also need to get rid of these bass kicks because we don't want bass kicks over the snare roll. So we'll just delete those. And then we'll take these snare rolls, we'll highlight them. 
select uh, the end of one and drag that to the left and it makes it half as long all of them so you select them all again copy all of them and if you go just to the right of the last one at the very next measure over and click paste there you go you have eight little snare hits and so it's a good snare roll sounds like this and don't worry about velocity velocity is how loud it is it'll get changed the snare roll is not really going to be that loud in the final mix um, what you're going to do and do is copy it again and paste it because you're going to go and just start your next your next bar. Uh, except this time we're going to change it up a little bit. We're going to change the hi hats. We don't want hi hats. We're going to go up and select symbols, like crash symbols. You also have other options such as you know, ride symbols and different hi hats. We're also going to move the snare to the third instead of the second and the fourth, so it gives it a heavier feel instead of a two-step type of feel like we had before. Also, we're going to get rid of some of these drum kicks because we don't want the drummer to have his foot going constantly the entire song. So, yeah, it sounds like this. Alright, I guess that was okay. So what we're going to do is copy it. And we're going to paste it again afterwards. So that way we keep up with the, the, uh, the style here. And let's see, what do I do? We're going to change the bass kicks on the second one because you know, bass, the drummer doesn't play the exact same thing every time. So I'm not really happy with that. So say you want to add double bass kicks. So we're going to take these first two bass kicks here. We're going to, we're going to do the same thing we do with the snare. We're going to roll them back to half as long. We're going to copy them. We're going to go just to the right of the first one and we're going to paste. That way we make it a double bass kick, the same way we did a snare roll. And we're going to listen back to that. Alright, that sounds pretty good. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy that one and we're going to paste it over top of the one we already have there. So just, just get rid of that. And we'll copy both of them and we'll paste them. But keep in mind, when you're copying and pasting these, make sure that the red line lines up on the exact measure, otherwise it's not going to be in tempo and it's going to sound off. This is the whole thing. And that's pretty much it. You're just going to want to go up to file and save it. And that's how you make drums in GarageBand.